little warriors Changing our world day by day The way of the crypto warriors Can't rely on the bank, there's no way Good morning, Big Swear, Roadrunner.com With your morning horn of Z's, your sip of chaga coffee You know, every morning when I get my coffee, I take a sip and I'm like, I start my news and I always forget to drink it. <laughs> so it's cold. So I got to throw it in the microwave when I'm done. There's your little behind the scenes scoop at Um, Yes, great day for gold and silver. Uh, but then the numbers are fake. You just got to keep that in your mind. The numbers are fake. I'm going to show you why $100,000 per ounce silver is a good very conservative estimate. <laughs> I wrote an article maybe 10 years ago saying that. And everybody's like, you're full of shit, Bix. Nah, it's impossible. $100,000 silver is impossible. And I said, hey, like I do with everything, here's how we get there. <laughs> so I'm going to show you that at the end of this um, little discussion. But let's talk silver. Yes, uh, largest jump in a long time, up uh, buck fifty-seven over twenty-four dollars. Um, remember, in nineteen eighty, silver hit fifty dollars, and you might see, well, fix that was because of the Hunt brothers. It might have been, but the Hunt brothers only took off one hundred million ounces off the. Comex in physical, and then they had longs of I think 110 or 120 million ounces. JP Morgan has taken over a billion ounces. So why didn't it go back up five times, ten times that when JP Morgan was taking physical off the markets? Because JP Morgan was massively short instead of long. Like the Hunt brothers went long on physical and took the physical. JP Morgan was shorting the electronic markets and taking the physical. Big difference, a big difference. Um, all done under the nose of the regulators, of under the nose of Obama and Bush and Trump and all the way going back to, <coughs> hell, every president has allowed the rigging of gold and silver because it is the alternative to the unbacked fiat money system that is now failing. That's the amazing thing. We don't even have to, the gold bugs don't even have to fight this fight anymore. The silver bugs don't have to fight the fight anymore. Why? Because the politicians are fighting it for us. You don't think they want, the, the Democrats don't want to destroy the economy? They would, they would rather you die of coronavirus than the economy do well. And that's quite obvious these days. Um, at least Trump's trying to do something on that front. And yes, hydroxychloroquine absolutely works when you take it early. There's all kinds of studies on it now. And it's like, who are the people who said it didn't? Those are the people who have to be tried for murder. Anyway, going back to silver, <laughs> this is a battle between the good guys and bad guys. It's still under control. The question is, who's pumping it and who's in trouble? We all know that silver is the bank killer. You can't, I mean, the the latest $5 in moves in the last few days, that's, uh, let's see, it's a short position of the top eight is about half a million, half a billion ounces, right? So $5 times half a billion, is, uh, that's $25, 2500000000 billion in losses. And it's even more in gold because they their losses in gold, I think, are up in the $15 billion range, which is Ted's, Ted Butler. Ted Butler, by the way. If you want to know anything about silver, join uh, Ted Butler's newsletter. He's he's old school. He doesn't even go on YouTube anymore. He never did. Well, he's got a couple of YouTube uh, postings, but interviews mainly. Uh, was it Butler Economics? No, that's that's in uh, Butler Research. Sorry, ButlerResearch.com. Set up, sign up for his newsletter. Best investment you'll ever make if you're invested in silver. All right, so, but on Road to Ruta, we don't deal with all the mainstream data like Ted does. We deal with conspiracy world because the conspiracy world is absolutely true. And it's been proven. You can prove conspiracies. I've done it time and time again, and I continue to do it. So let's talk about $24.30 silver. Nice. Gold going to hit 2000 
Remember, there's massive amounts of gold. Gold will probably still go up 10x to 20,000. Silver will go one to one with gold. Ultimately, gold and silver will go to infinity, especially with the coming chaos. So now's the time to have physical, nothing but physical, by the way. And that's part of the reason how physical metal, physical silver will get to $100,000 is because people have investments in things they think are silver, but they aren't silver. SLV is not silver. It's got nothing to do with silver. Who owns the SLV warehouse? The authorized participants, not you. Who has control over it? Of course, JP Morgan, not you. Who owns the uh, ETF? BlackRock, the other co-conspirator that is taking over, probably taking over silver manipulation at some point. Too hard for them to do it sub $50, but after $50, I'll probably jump in somewhere. How do I know that there's a battle going on for between gold and silver, the good guys and the bad guys? You get shit like this from Bloomberg. A mighty short squeeze may be building in gold. Do you think they'd be allowed to say this if there wasn't a battle between the, those who want to keep gold under control, the Trump administration, the good guys, and the bad guys who Bloomberg obviously works for? The mighty short squeeze may be building in gold. It was building for the last 100 years. Why now? Because there's a battle to destroy the economy. Gold and silver are the, are the alternatives to the unbacked fiat system. Remember, the bad guys want out of this system too. They need to hide their, their many misgivings, their many crimes. They need to hide that shit. Anyway, on Bloomberg, an increase in demand for physical deliveries could trigger a parabolic rise and cause problems for the banks. You don't say this in the mainstream media. You don't, you're not allowed to say this unless there's a battle between the Democrats and the Republicans, the good guys and the bad guys, the good ETs and the bad ETs, the good spirits and the bad spirits. The only one not at, not at war right now is probably God. <laughs> God's sitting there going, hey, this is what you guys want to experience. Here you go. Remember, you can't understand good unless you understand evil. You can't understand success unless you understand failure. It's the yin and yang. You have to have both. So, so here we go. Let's talk about gold and silver, where we are. The Bloomberg article is ridiculous. Everybody knows it. It's comical. Um, but this stuff, where are we here? Let's talk about this. We're coming down to the nitty gritty when it comes to the delivery month of September. I don't believe we're going to get there for the comic. I don't think the comic is going to be around to fulfill the delivery obligations in September. The open interest has barely inched down. They got to shed massive amounts of contracts. And basically what they do historically is roll them over. If you're in, if you're playing on the comics, playing in that world, first of all, you're insane to do it. J.P. Morgan and friends control that whole market. No, they're not going to deliver 138,000 contracts. That's 700 million ounces of physical silver. So they got to get rid of that open interest before the end of August. And remember, August has what, maybe 20 trading days. So there's a couple trading days left this month. We're about about 23 to 25 trading days away from the delivery of September silver. Let's let's take a look. I'll, I'll even pull out the big calculator. Here it is, the big calculator. I got it for fun because I always screw up my calculations. And this way I can have a, a paper record to make sure I don't screw up. So let's say 25 days. Uh, open interest is 138. 032 times shit 138 032 divided by 25 days equals so right now if the bad if the the bad guys who hold the short position the people who might potentially have to deliver metal they're sitting on if they try to get out of their contract for 
September. They need to dump 5,521 contracts per day, per day, or roll them over. They don't have to dump them. They can roll them over to December, I think, is the next delivery month. Yes, December. Which is, it's really not growing. December's not growing, but September is not shrinking. So they need to shed 5,521 contracts every day, every trading day, until the first delivery date of September to get rid of this monster open interest position. And what happens? They're not shedding anything. I mean, it's been stuck around 140,000 contracts for pretty much all of July. It's going to be very exciting, but no way the comics gets to that. No way they get to the September delivery month. You, you want to see a timing on this? This is how you determine timing. When are the banks going to be the most stressed? Is when they're going to pull the little trigger, the little man behind the curtain. It used to be Alan Greenspan. Now it's whoever, whoever runs the show, probably Mnuchin. Is that behind the curtain pulling all these levers? You want to know when he can't pull the lever is when we get to the September delivery date. Either they shut down silver and gold, which I think they will be doing in August. Or they come up with right now 800 million ounces of physical silver to be delivered. I do want to show you something. Look at last week right here. This is last week. The largest trading volume month in the history of history for silver. The total, I already did this calculation, 685,000 contracts. 685 times 5,000. <laughs> Hold on. What's happening? Times 5,000. <laughs> Last, okay. So here, this is, here's the comics. Remember, remember, half, half the uh, silver mines are shut down due to COVID. Last week, on for five days total, in five days, 3,425,000 ounces of silver, electronic silver, Traded hands. <laughs> it's a con. And the open interest barely changed. It's 100% a con. Everything is. The stock market, the bond market, the gold and silver market, the crypto markets, they're all fake. How do you know you're, they're fake? Look at the volumes. What the hell? Why would anybody trade 3.4 billion ounces of silver last week? 3.4 billion. That's, what is that? Uh, I'm doing some quick math in my head. Divided by eight. That's over four years of mining silver. Traded in the last week. Four years of hundreds of thousands of people around the world. Billions of dollars in capital to pull it out of the ground. The amount of work and effort in the mining industry to get that silver out of the ground. It's over four years worth of mining production. Trades in a week. Who is the CFTC? The regulator of the silver market. Are they really that stupid? Or are they really that corrupt? They're really that corrupt. There's some stupid people in there. Don't get me wrong. Michael Dunn was probably the stupidest regulator in the history of mankind. Michael Dunn was a CFTC regulator and said, oh, no, 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 I'm not going to vote for position limits. And then he left the CFTC to go to the DTCC. where they And with him, he took all the paper contracts, the literal paper contracts of swaps for metals and put them in a vault at 55 Water Street right before Hurricane Sandy came through. And he was in charge of that vault at 50. Michael Dunn was in charge of the vault at 55 Water Street. And he left the door open on $33 trillion worth of paper contracts. He left the door open. So everything got flooded. Then they pumped it all out. 
<clears throat> and then what they do? They set it on fire. I'm not shitting you. Go back to the road. Go to roadrunner.com. Roadrunner.com. Look up uh, Michael Dunn, D-U-N-N, or look up 55 Water Street. Look up uh, Hurricane Sandy. I've documented it all. The con is unbelievable. I think that the the actual interview I did with Sean at SGT Report was called How Dark is the Con at the DTCC? So, yep, very exciting. And uh, yes, options for silver. Um, they go, it is September and December. It's not going to get to September. I doubt, highly doubt that, that the comics will even be open. Or they'll have some force majeure or settle for physical or some bullshit. They pull out their ass because they get to change the rules. It's their game, my friends. So when you look at this price of silver, $24.24, know where that comes from. That comes from right here. This is the only silver market on planet Earth. It comes from this insanity of high-frequency trading back and forth by maybe three big market riggers. Maybe three is the vast majority of that, including J.P. Morgan, Citibank, BlackRock's probably in there, HSBC I heard was kicked out. It is insane. You want to see something else that's insane? The warehouse, silver warehouse data. Remember, the Department of Justice has J.P. Morgan up on, six traders up on RICO charges rigging the gold and silver markets. And yet, at the same time, the CME group, which owns the COMEX, allows JP Morgan to hold half the silver for all traders on planet Earth that deal with the CME. JP Morgan has half of the silver. It's really interesting because it rarely, rare, it doesn't go above half. It's almost exactly half, 163 million ounces in the J.P. Morgan warehouse and 329 million ounces overall. I'll guarantee you the J.P. Morgan agreement is that you can't have over 50% in the warehouse because that might raise a red flag. How many red flags do you need for J.P. Morgan? My friend Chris Marcus, I think, started a petition to uh, ban J.P. Morgan from trading. Hey, they got to be banned from trading because if they aren't, they're going to be taken out, which means they, the largest bank in the world, would destroy the economic system. Wouldn't it be fitting that J.P. Morgan gets blamed for destroying the economics? I would blame everybody else, all the regulators who are supposed to be in there. The, <laughs> these banks are regulated by the Fed. These banks that need a bailout every day are regulated by the Fed and by the CFTC if they're trading silver and gold. It's the regulators of the problem. I talk down at the Jeff Berwick's adventure down on Arcapulco every year. The regulators are the issue. Get rid of the regulators and then people go, oh my God, can you imagine the amount of criminality we'd have if there was no regulators? Yes. That's why people wouldn't even look at the price. It wouldn't even matter because it's a crime. People wouldn't invest in silver that was dealt with in a corrupt market. The problem is the regulators are here. How fast would the comics close down if there were no regulators? Instantly, everybody would recognize the con and no one would participate. And then boom, that's a free market. would get, get away with, take that shit and get it out of here. A sound market with open and honest trading would open up, and that's how the problem is fixed by the free market. And everybody would go to the, the exchange that they trust. It's the regulators that are the problem. Criminals will always be around. Regulators don't do dick. All they do is run cover for the manipulation. All right. You've heard me preach about this. All right. Let's run down $100,000 silver. When I threw this out 10 years ago, people said, Bix, you're insane. How can you say that? Silver's, I think it was about $15 a pound. You can't say that. I said, why can't you say that? You can say it if you back it up. Okay, here's how we get to $100,000 silver. People are wondering, oh, the price has gone up too high. It's gone up 
in the last few days. It's gone up 40%. How many percent is this? $100,000. That's a lot of percent. Here, I wrote an article, 20 Reasons to Sell by Physical Silver. It was all about, if these things happen, I will sell my silver. Until these things happen, I won't sell it. So I went through it, each one of these things. If each one of these things happens, we get closer and closer to the $100,000. The number one thing that, that needs to happen and has needed to happen on the comics, since the comics was invented in the early 1970s, is you got to get rid of the gigantic concentrated shorts. It's eight traders. You just got to get rid of them. I don't know why banks are even allowed to trade in commodities. Banks are given a license to print money and then they go gamble it? That doesn't make sense. The number one thing is the removal of a giant concentrated short position on the comic silver market as reported in the CFTC traders and, and bank participation report. That's what Ted talks about every day. That's the number one. Number two, this is how we'll get to $100,000 silver. The announcement of charges filed by both CFTC and the FBI, the DOJ, an investigation of Silver market manipulation, that was done. But whatever happened to that, those six investigations, I guarantee you they're going to settle. Nobody's going to go to jail. Blythe Masters should be already in jail. She might be in Guantanamo. But when that happens, boom, you're going to have silver run. The admission and the filing of charges and the administration administering of justice to JP Morgan. That'll be a good day. How about this? Shut down the iShare Silver ETF and sub and subsequent attempt by SLV investors to transfer into physical silver. SLV investors think they own physical silver, they don't. What's going to happen when all the uh, authorized participants pull the silver out because they're the only ones who can do it? Where are those silver investors going to go? They're going to run to the real thing. It's like, shit, why do I invest in a piece of paper when I could have the real thing, physical silver, in my own possession? Another wave of buying into physical silver. Number four, the implementation of COMEX position limits in silver of no more than 5,000 contracts and the enforcement of the disruptive practices law, trading law, which they basically stripped all the Dodd-Frank law. But when we finally get position limits, which is a joke, 5,000 is still way too much. Do you know that the eight, the eight shorts are, are short like 35,000 contracts? Or 30, 30, 350 million ounces. Divided by eight. Divided by 15 or 5,000. Right now, they're sitting with 8,750, each of them, on average. Ted Butler's like, 5,000 should be the maximum. That's a big move. That's, uh, I can tell you how many ounces. doesn't matter. <laughs> when they implement position limits, we know at some point they're going to max out. Number five, winding down of the outrageous manipulated manipulative silver derivative positions held by J.P. Morgan and Citibank, as reported by the U.S. Office of Contro Comptroller of Currency. This is the OTC stuff, the stuff you don't even know about. There's only two banks in the U.S. that hold this position. It's J.P. Morgan and Citibank. They own 99% of the OTC derivatives in silver. Why? Why are they allowed to do that? The only reason to do it is to rig the price of silver down. Number six, the mass redemption of silver currently held in pooled silver accounts and silver certificate programs into physical silver. Yes, places like Perth Mint, Kitco, anybody who has pooled silver, good night. You're not going to get it. It's hard to get it now. They're going to shut down all redemptions. It doesn't matter if it's allocated or not. It's bullshit. Their programs are 100% lie. The silver to gold price ratio reflects the true physical relationship between above ground silver and above ground gold available for sale on a free and open market. I talk about the current ratio of, I think it's 80 right now, 
historically should go down to 12 to 1 before derivatives really came in computer trading in the 1970s 12 to 1 15 to 1 you'll hear those numbers bantied around but above ground there's two six billion ounces of physical silver and six billion ounces of physical gold that's a one-to-one -one relationship there's so much gold out there and, and there's even more gold it could go 10 1 to 10 silver being worth 10 times the amount of gold so at $10,000 gold, we could see $100,000 silver because of all these reasons I'm giving you. Number eight, the realization by industrial users of silver that the supply of physical silver is rapidly depleting with the future of producing their products in jeopardy. They begin stockpiling physical silver. That Ted has talked about that for a long time. We're going to have companies like Apple and Dow and anybody who use physical silver all the uh, all the solar companies scrambling to get their hands on physical silver. Number nine, the reversal of silver's ever increasing use in industrial applications due to high prices, or the discovery of a viable substitute with similar physical properties and attributes. Silver's the best. Silver's the best conductor of electricity, and best at so many. It's the most reflective. It's blah 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 blah. Yes, you can use copper. But it's not as good. Are you getting the idea of how valuable silver really is? Number 10, the realization by the 99.9% .9 of the investing public that does not currently own any physical silver, that silver is extremely undervalued and should be held by all investors interested in portfolio safety and appreciation value. That's everybody in the stock market. Everybody in the stock market starts flooding into physical silver. Why? Because they follow the this shiny object. They follow the rising price. Silver's a tiny market. There's not enough room. But they're all going to be running to gold and silver. Number 11, acknowledgement by the bullion banks and U.S. government. They have been involved in a price suppression scheme of silver for over 50 years in order to support and extend the global confidence in the unbacked fiat monetary system. When the government finally admits it, what are people going to do? Oh, my God. You mean silver price has been rigged for that long? Absolutely. Number 12, all silver statistical reporting companies have completely revised their historical numbers to reflect the true supply-demand realities. Every number you see in silver is wrong. Every number you see is wrong. The supply-demand is just made-up number. It's a joke. There's very little silver left. They, how do I know that? They had to shut down the world's most important facility just to get 3 billion ounces of silver in the 1990s. The Manhattan Project. It was put there in the 1940s and it stayed there. It was the, the silver that was supposed to be backing our silver certificate. And I have proven it time and time again that it was taken out and used. And then they were so desperate for physical silver in the 90s they had to tear it down and brought it all back on, back online. Number 13, the USGS alerts the world to the reality that the real silver consumption rates, there at real so, silver consumption rates, there's less than 10 years of known silver above ground or below ground. These are the reserves. I haven't looked at it in a few years, but it's about 10 to 12 years. One of the very first elements that will be disappearing from the planet based on what we've found so far. It's hard to even conceptualize that. Number 14, when people start getting this in their head, they're going to say, oh my God, silver's only $24 an ounce? Why? Because it's been rigged. And all this stuff has to unwind. Number 14, the realization by investors that significant increase in the price of silver would not curtail industrial demand as silver is mostly used in very small amounts in each product produced meaning it's inelastic. Like I said, inelastic or elastic? Inelastic, I think. Number 15, the mainstream media highlights that investment drivers for silver far outweigh the investment drivers for gold. Oh my God. You have the exact same drivers of gold and silver as an investment, but silver also has this absolutely necessary industrial demand attached to it as well. It's double the, the buck. The reason to buy silver is twofold. Because like when 
everything gets under control and, and the Fed stops printing money, they're going to say, oh, oh, we don't need gold now because we've got things under control. For silver, it will be, oh, we don't need silver because we've got things under control. Oh, by the way, our industrial capacity is going to be expanding, so we need more silver. <laughs> and vice versa. Number 16, the U.S. Mint starts to produce silver eagles, quote, in quantities sufficient to meet demand and no longer illegally ration their dwindling supply. A few years back, I was screaming about this. It is required by law. They changed the law. <laughs> I think it was because I was screaming about it. They changed the law to say the Treasury Secretary gets to decide whether or not the quantities are sufficient. He makes the call. The bastard right now. Right now, everything is just being rationed all around the world. The Perth Mint. The uh, Royal Canadian Mint, U.S. Mint. Number 17, when investors stop saying that silver's too hard to store. That's always a classic. Oh, it's too hard to store silver. Well, you know, I'm sorry for your big problem that maybe you can buy a warehouse with your billions of dollars that you have because you stored your own silver. Do not store silver anywhere but in your own possession. Number 18. When central bankers around the world stop printing money every time there's a bump in the road and their never-ending quest, this is what I would sell myself, and their never-ending quest to foster perpetual growth and the <coughs> extend the extraordinary wealth transfer from the many to the few. When that happens, when they stop doing that, I'll sell my silver. Until then, silver's going to keep going up in price. And we all know that's all bankers know how to do. Every problem is solved by printing money. Number 19, the U.S. government. When the U.S. government and citizens of the United States recognize it and acknowledge Article 1, Section 10 of the U.S. Constitution specifies that only gold and silver coin can be legally used as money, and the Coinage Act of 1792 defined the dollar as, quote, 371 grains and 4 sixteenths part of pure grain or 416 grains of standard silver. That's the definition of the dollar. You guys want to know why all that change is disappearing right now? There's been all these, oh, they want to get us to a, a, you know, a cashless society and all that. And it's bullshit. You want to know why? Pick up a quarter. Pick up a quarter. I got a quarter right back here. I got a penny. You know who made this penny? Was it a Federal Reserve? Did the Federal Reserve make change? Who makes change? The U.S. Mint. The U.S. Mint is an arm of the U.S. government. The Federal Reserve is not. They're two separate currencies. Coins and Federal Reserve notes, your $1 bill, your $100 bill, are completely different currencies circulating within the United States. Coins, the reason they're disappearing, anybody with half a brain is probably hoarding them. Why? Because when the Federal Reserve note goes bye-bye, what are we left with? There you go. That's why, that's why coins are disappearing. Somebody got smart. Said, oh my God. These coins are completely a different currency than these pieces of paper, than what's in my bank account. Federal Reserve notes versus the coinage of the United States of America minted by the U.S. Mint. Yes, go load up on coins. Although, I, if you're going to load up on something, I'd say load up on pre-1965 silver coins. And that is coming back too, by the way. Keep an eye out. And finally, number 20. When will I sell my silver? When the price of silver is driven so high that it has fulfilled all my hopes and aspirations as an investor. And I can now sit back and enjoy those other pleasures of life that I had put off in pursuit of freeing silver market from the clutches of manipulation. There you go. There's your 20 ways that silver will go to $100,000 per ounce. It ain't going to happen tomorrow, but it could if all these things happened, which means. Silver was freely traded. We could see a hundred thousand dollar an ounce silver, well above the price of gold. 
if gold's at 10,000 and all this stuff happened that I I outlined each and everything should happen but when it does happen there you got your $100,000 an ounce silver and you can go to number 20 on my list kick back and enjoy the brilliance of your investment <laughs> this has been a long one let's see what the price of silver doing $24.27 on the way to 100,000 this is big swear you want more on the road to Ruta, go to roadtoruta.com. Click subscribe today and join the private road. You can get everything. All 20 years of archives about silver and why the price is moving now and how far can it go. And you'll also get this lottery ticket here. 100 Theta and 100 Theta Fuel. I The more I study Theta, the more I understand it. It is required. It is the future of the internet future broad street broadband streaming but the future of the internet if we want the internet of things we need massive capacity you can't do that with a centralized network you have to do it with something like theta decentralized broadband anyway join the road to this is big so i'll talk to you guys later oh i gotta sip my coffee i forgot it.